So if you want to open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13... This coming week, uh, my family and I are headed out to western Kansas, where I'm from, a little town called Syracuse, Kansas. And I imagine we'll go out and visit where my brother Randy lives, which is the home place where I grew up on. And if you go into the kitchen in my home place, my mom, it's still there, there's a, a broom closet. And when you open the door on the broom closet, if you look at it, you see all these names Sandy Jim Dan Randy and then sometimes they use my name sometimes they had other names for me <clears throat> but it would have a pencil mark and a date and then there'd be a pencil mark and a date as we got taller I, mine stayed the same for a long time but but you see do you know what that was that was a record my mom kept a record of our physical growth, progress. I mean, down here it says peewee, peewee, peewee. And then finally it changed. I got a little bit bigger. It said Scott. <laughs> but you see, it was, it was a record of spiritual growth. Now, uh, maybe I, I think we ought to do that. Let's all go in the back and we'll stand up against the door. What's that? Oh, International Bible Day. All right. Well, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna read right out of it. So, if we all go in the back, and, and, and now we're not, I'm not interested in physical stature. We're talking about spiritual progress and spiritual maturity here today. So, so if we back up against the wall, and today we're going to look at, hmm, Braddock's uh, self-control is here. And maybe your purity or your righteousness or your compassion. And we all backed up against the wall and we put a line there and we marked 11, 17. 11, 17, 18. And we come back in six months and we all backed up against there and uh, we put a mark and we said, hmm, Braddock, it's no different. It's no different. You haven't changed. Or, oh, it's worse. You've shrunk. You've gone in the wrong direction. And so, this morning, I want us to look at a passage of Scripture that, uh, that has to do with growth. Not stature-wise, but spiritual growth. Uh, Growing closer and closer to Jesus, being more and more like Him. And so, if you have your Bibles, Matthew chapter 13, let's, let's pray together. Father, thank You for Your Word. And Lord, this is a, a Sunday that we recognize Your Word for what it is. It's Your Word, Lord. And this morning, that as we open it, I pray, Lord, that You would, uh, as the song says, that You would open the eyes of our heart. And that, Lord, you would give us ears to hear what you want to speak to our hearts this morning, Lord. Father, I pray that uh, for each one of us, uh, wherever we're at in our, in our journey with you, wherever we're at in our walk with Christ, I pray, Lord, that you would challenge us, that you would encourage us. Lord, our heart's desire. I, I pray, Lord, that uh, next November 18th, 2019, we can look back. And when we stand up against that door, Lord, the mark would be in a different place. It would be because we're closer to you, because we love you more, we want to serve you more, Lord. So, Father, speak to our hearts this morning, we pray. Amen. So, Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 13, we're going to read verses uh, 4 through 9, and then we're going to jump down and start in verse 18. This is the parable of the seed and the sower. It says, Behold the sower.
Okay. So, just a background here. A parable, a parable is simply a story that you might say has a, it, 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 Jesus used parables all the time. It was a story that everyone that could, could relate to that conveyed a spiritual truth. Uh, it would have been easy when, when Jesus started talking about the parable of the seed and the sower. Everyone that he was talking to could see that scenario in their mind. They had seen countless times a man out in his field sowing his seed. So, I mean, it, was, it wasn't something. And what he was trying to do was he was trying to take, this is going to be hard because I have to hold this thing up in my mouth. Huh? No, it's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll hold it up. So he's, he's trying to convey a spiritual truth by, by using a, a word picture, a story that everyone that could, could, we, could relate to. And so Jesus speaks about four different kinds of soil. And every one of them has the, a different condition. And every one of them has a different result. The soil is a picture of your heart and mine. Four different heart conditions. And so there's a few things I want us to remember. First off, as you read down through there, they all heard the word. It said the seed was planted in all the soil types. They all heard it. Can you hear me this morning? There's three of you. <laughs> now, is everyone listening? Wow, I thought I'd get about 50% of the three. First off, they all heard the word. Secondly, it was the same seed. They threw the seed, he threw, when he was scattering the seed, he didn't differentiate when he was along the edge of the road or when the, the ground was stony or when it was good soil. Or, it was all the same seed. And if you look, if, if, if you're wanting to read your Bible this afternoon, this same account is listed in, Ma, in Mark chapter 4 and also in Luke 8. And, and in Luke's version, and he, he, he just clarifies it, he says, and the seed is the word of God. So they all heard the word. It was the same seed. It was also the same sower. So I want, to, I want us to take a look this morning at the four different types of soil. The first kind of soil I'll call trampled soil or hard pan. The second type is shallow soil. That's the rocky soil. The third the third type of soil is thorny soil. That's a weedy ground. And the fourth type is fallow soil, good ground. So four different kinds of soil, all the same seed, the same sower, but drastically different results. First off, trampled soil. If you look in verse 4 of Matthew 13, Jesus said, and as he sowed, some seeds fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate them up. And then when he explains that, in verse 19, does that work? When Jesus, bear with me. when Jesus begins to explain that, the trampled soil, in verse 19 he says, 
when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it. Now, if, if I wanted to be a pharmacist, and I, but I knew that the best school in the world was in China, it would really do me no good to go to study pharmacy in China because I don't understand Mandarin. It could be the best possible school there. And I wouldn't have a clue what they were saying. Because I don't speak Chinese. I don't understand it. And Jesus said, what did he say? He said, if you don't understand it, it does you no good. If you, if you look in Luke's version, it's interesting when he says, when the sower sowed the seed along the trampled soil it says and, and it was trampled down underfoot when I think about I think about two reasons why something is walked on or trampled underfoot first off I don't see it now when I'm in western Kansas this this trip there's one thing I love to do and I know when I tell you this you'll go man Brad your life is dull and boring one of my favorite things to do in life is to hunt shark's teeth. I mean, it really is. And there, are, there were, used to be a ton of sharks in western Kansas. There really did. And I just love to hunt fossilized shark's teeth. I mean, there's a certain area out there. And I, I love to take my, my niece and nephew's kids out. And they're all little kids. Scott, show us where they're at. And they can't see them. And so I'll... I'll get down and I'll find one, but I won't. I'll say, I'll, draw, I'll, I'll put a circle in the dirt and I'll say, it's inside this circle. But you see, if I didn't point that out, they'd just walk right over it. Because right. they didn't see it. Another reason that, that we walk on things, maybe we don't see it, it may not have any value to us. I remember one of my, when I first worked for my brother-in-law, one of the guys, one of our co-workers, and I, I, I look back and I go, I wonder why he worked with us. Because he really didn't like my brother-in-law at all. I guess he just wanted a paycheck. But sometimes on construction sites, you can, we'll pull all the tools out of the truck and they're all right there, right where you're working. And, and I mean, you got tools and stuff everywhere. And I watched him over and over again. He would walk. He, he, he had no care or concern for my brother's tools. He just walked right over them. Nail guns, levels, whatever. It didn't matter. Do you know why? Because he didn't care. He didn't hold it. There was no value to them at all. That speaks to me. I need to value... When the Lord's trying to speak to me, I need to value what he says. I mean, it is the Lord speaking. It's the Lord of all the universe trying to speak to Scott Braddock's heart. I need to value that. And then Jesus goes on and explains. He says, well, when the, when the seed was trampled down, it says the birds of the air came and snatched it away. And then he explains who the birds of the air are. He says... And the evil one will come and steal it away. The enemy of your soul and mind. Because he knows the power, the value, the strength of God's word planted in your heart and mind. And what's he want to do? He wants to steal it right out of your heart. I heard a preacher say once, don't let the devil steal on Monday what the Lord spoke to you on Sunday doesn't have to be Sunday. He can speak to you anytime. But don't let the devil steal what he's tried to plant in your heart. That's the first kind of soil, trampled soil. Secondly, he talks about shallow soil. If you look in verses 5 and 6, he says, And other seed fell on the rocky places where there did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up because they had no depth of soil. But when the sun had risen, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. 
I've shared this before, but if you go in my backyard, my septic tank is in my backyard. And if you, if you walk in my backyard in April and May, the grass is green and lush. And you don't know where it is. But come July and August, when the ground gets a little bit dry and the sun is beating down on the grass, you can see exactly where my septic tank is. You know why? Because the grass, it can't grow roots through that cement lid. It has no, the, the roots of that grass has no depth right there. Everywhere else, the, the roots, it may be a little bit dry everywhere else, but the roots have gone down deeper. But over that septic tank, it doesn't gain any nutrients from that concrete lid. The same thing for you and I. When the Lord, when that seed is planted in your heart, if there's no depth there, if it's shallow, if it doesn't take root, I mean real root, Jesus goes on to explain when persecution or tribulation arises because of that word. And I, I think his situations, maybe, maybe you have, maybe the Lord's trying to work in your heart about, maybe you get angry real easy or quick to anger. Get frustrated, get mad. And you go, Lord, I, I know you want me to change. I know I need to deal with this. And, and the Lord really starts working in your heart. And then you're driving to work. It, it, it's interesting to me. Driving can really reveal where your heart's at. Can reveal some of your emotions. Might even reveal some of your self-control. Your language. And someone you're driving along and someone cuts you off or is, is trying to read the bumper stickers on your car from about two feet away. And you know what you want to do? Ugh, you want to wave with the, wave at them with one finger. Some of you understood that. <laughs> or you might get right behind them and lay on your horn. I don't know what good that does. But you see, do you know what's happened? The seed that was planted didn't have any root. And he, Jesus even says, when tribulation or persecution arises because of that, it withers away because there's no depth there. It can only go so deep. So for you and I, uh, for don't, we don't want to plant our seed over the septic tank for sure. But it's hard pan. It's shallow. It's rocky soil. You and I need to break it up. Because when you and I, I guarantee you this, this I, I, will, I will stake my life on this. If you make a commitment to follow the Lord in obedience to anything, may, maybe you decide, and I'll use, I'll use tithing, maybe you decide, Lord, I really need to gain some self-control. I need, Lord, I need to quit gossiping and slandering about people. Guess what's going to happen very quickly? You're going to be tested. Automatic. The minute you say, yes, Lord, you have just set in motion to find out if it's real. The Bible talks about in Romans 5, it says, proven character. Do you know proven character is not proven character until it's proven character? It's not real until it's tested. The third type of soil that Jesus talked about, he talked about weedy soil. In verse 7, he says, Another seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them out. And when he explained that, 
down in Matthew verses 22, and he says, and, one, and the one on whom seed was sown among the thorns, this is the man who hears the word and the worries of the world and the deceitfulness of riches. And if you look in, in Mark, it says the desires for other things. And if you look in Luke, it adds, and the pleasures of this life. It says they choke out the word and it becomes unfruitful. Years ago, it's been quite a number of years, Lan and I used to have a flock of goats. We really like goats. And we had a milk goat, and we just loved I mean, we really did like goats. So we always liked the springtime when we had baby goats. Lots of, we loved baby goats when our kids were little. Well, invariably, you'd end up with little billy goats. And I, I've shared this before. You'd end up with little billy goats. Now, there's nothing more worthless in the world than a whole bunch of little billy goats. So we had this contraption that debillied the billy goats. It, it looked like a pair of pliers that had these four prongs on it. And, you, you would, and it took all the effort to... To push this little, little, tiny, heavy-duty rubber band on these four prongs. So you, when you squeeze the handles, this rubber band got bigger. Okay? And then you would take this, this rubber band and you would catch you a little baby billy goat. And you would put the appropriate parts <laughs> inside that little rubber band. And then you let loose of the pliers. And that rubber band that was bigger got real small again. And you would hear, and then you'd turn the little goats loose, and they'd, ma, 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 ma. But then after about 30 minutes, they quit because it had, it had grown numb. And in about two or three weeks, you didn't have a billy goat anymore because all the appropriate parts fell off because the life was choked out of it. Of them. What did Jesus say? He said, he says, there are certain things that are like weeds in your heart that will literally choke the life right out of my word. He says things like this. He says, the worries of the world. What are the worries of the world? Jesus talks about in Matthew 6. He says, don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear. Don't worry about that. But we do. We do. And I'm not saying I, I want to be a responsible person. But on the other hand, if you're going to follow Jesus, he is quite capable, isn't he, Robert White, at the right time of taking care of you when your kids needed a pet, set of bunk bids. He took care of him at the right time. He didn't do it any early. Didn't need it. You didn't need that set of bunk beds a month ago. You need it now. But the worries of the world, and then he goes on and he says, and the deceitfulness of riches. Riches will lie to you. Because Proverbs 18, 11 says this. It says, the wealth of a rich man is like a, a great city, like a high wall in his own imagination. The wealth of a rich man. It's in his own imagination. It, 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 it's like, man, I got, I got a fistful of dollars and I'm protected from poverty and I'm protected from hurt and pain and suffering. Uh-uh, it's a lie. That's the deceitfulness of riches. Because it doesn't protect you from that. Lana showed me a video last night. And I tell you, it is, it is heart-wrenching. It was the story, uh, well, it was the last few years and days and the final day of Elvis Presley's life on earth, 1977. And it had interviews. I mean, all his, he, had a, he had an entourage of men. They called them uh, Presley's Mafia. He had this group of guys that traveled with him. It was, I mean, his own personal bodyguards. These, these, these guys are all in their 60s now. 
But they talk about, I mean, a man who supposedly had everything in the world, and you talk about bankrupt. And his promoter was a man who was a terrible, terrible gambler. I mean, this guy, these bodyguards talk about, they said, we saw him in Vegas two times lose a million dollars sitting at a table. And so he, he just pushed Elvis Presley to perform. Why? Because he got 50% of all the proceeds. So if Mr. Elvis didn't perform, he couldn't pay his gambling debts. And so he was always pushing Elvis to perform, perform, perform. And of course, Elvis took uppers and downers and in-betweeners and everything else. But, I mean, you talk about tragedy. The deceitfulness of riches. Jesus also said in Luke, he talks about, he says, the desires for other things. Now, it doesn't even say things. It just says the desire for them. God really isn't against you and I having things. He's against things having us. He says in Matthew 6, Jesus says, wherever your treasure is, there's your heart. And the opposite of that is true also. Wherever your heart is, that's where your treasure is. You know, I need to make sure, because what happens, the desires for other things, what does it do? It comes in and it snuffs out the life. It's interesting, the word worry, and, and I, I just want to inject, interject this when he says the worries of the world. The root meaning of the word worry means to seize by the throat. That's graphic. To me, worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it doesn't get you anywhere. But he says the desires for other things, the deceitfulness of riches, the worries of the world. And he says the pleasures of this life. I, again, it all has to do with our heart condition. It all has to do with, with making sure, because when I think about my heart yeah it's a it's supposed to be a piece of ground but it also is a throne and there's only one chair on that throne there isn't two I'm, my father-in-law used to have this bumper this tag on the front of his pickup terrible theology it says god is my co-pilot right. that's terrible theology man if god isn't your pilot your airplane and everything he isn't in the, he isn't in it He's not going to sit alongside while you fly it. Guess what? He wants to fly it. You're along for the ride. But we've got to guard against those things because what, what they'll do is they will come in and they will seize us by the throat and they will literally choke out the life of what the Lord wants to do in you and I. Finally, he talks about good ground. He says, and there was some seed that fell on good ground. Now, I, have, I, I grew up, my dad was a farmer his whole life. I have two brothers that are still farmers. And they have to prepare. They have to prepare the soil. If they want to have a good crop, if they want to reap something, it doesn't just happen. They have to prepare the soil. They have to work it. It, it takes labor. It, it takes money. But they have to prepare it to plant the seed for it to grow. They can't leave weeds on it. They have to prepare it for you and I. Same way. For us to have fallow ground. We need to prepare our hearts. We need to prepare our soil. Uh, he goes on and he says, I can't, I'll have to look it up, I can't remember. And the one on whom, actually this is over in, in Mark's, Mark's version of it. 
No, it's in Luke's. In Luke 8. I want to read this to you. And the seed in the good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word in an honest and good heart and hold it fast and bear fruit with perseverance. Brothers and sisters, it takes work. It takes work to prepare the soil. And then once the Lord speaks to our heart, to hold it there. For one, why? We talked about it at the beginning. The, the enemy wants to come and steal it from you. John 10.10 10 says the thief, the thief comes to what? Kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to steal the word that, that is planted. That, that you, that when, when you say yes to the Lord and you say, Lord, I, I, I want these, I, I want to I have more self-control. Or I want to walk closer to you. I want to deal with my greed. I want to be a grateful person. The enemy, he's just looking for the opportunity to pluck that right out. Four different types of soil. Four different heart conditions. I see myself in all of these in different, I mean, I can think of just Situations go, yeah, that's where I'm at. But for you and I, brothers and sisters, because if, you're, if you want to walk with Jesus, if you want to be a Christian, I mean, if, you, if you're going to walk with him, I don't want to back up against the door five years from now, five months from now, and go, man, Brad, you're where you were five years ago. Is there no life in you? Say, oh, man, you're shorter than you were when it comes to self-control. And you got less now than you did a month ago. The goal on our journey is to grow closer to Him. And that's going to take you and I taking the soil of our heart and preparing it not, and, and dealing with the hard pan, dealing with those areas where, where, where we're like, uh, Lord, don't go there. Uh, I want to keep control of that part of my heart. Or it may be those areas that, are, that are, I mean, maybe you are consumed with the worries of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things. And what's it going to do? It's just going to literally snuff the life out of it. But to walk with the Lord, your hearts need to be prepared. And we need to allow the, the Lord to plant His seed in our heart and grow. Pray with me. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your word. And, and Lord, for every one of us this morning. Lord, I pray that we would break up the hard, stony places in our heart. That, uh, Lord, those areas where, where, we, uh, where it's just like hard pan, that we won't allow you to go and won't allow you to change us. Or, Lord, whether it's we are just totally consumed by the worries of, of this world and the pleasures of this life, Lord, I pray that you would work in our hearts this morning. And Lord, I pray this morning that the word that's planted for every one of us, I pray that we'd take it and guard it, that the enemy couldn't steal it from us. Lord, that, that we would grow closer and closer to you. That our desire would be to serve you and to love you more each and every day, Lord Jesus. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Lord bless you all. Have a good day.